الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله الله أكبر الله أكبر ولله الحمد. In a beautiful hadith of the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم said من سلط طريقا يلتمسه فيه علم سهل الله له به طريقا إلى الجنة. وما اجتمع قوم في بيت من بيوت الله يتلون كتاب الله ويتدارس ويتدارسونه بينهم إلا نزلت عليهم السكينة غشيتهم رحمة الرحمة وحفتهم الملائكة وذكرهم الله في من عنده ومن بطأ به عمله لم يسرع به نصبه. In this hadith in Sahih Muslim, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alaihi wasallam said, "Whoever traverses the path of knowledge, Allah will make easy for him the path of Jannah." And a people do not gather together in one of the houses from amongst the houses of Allah, meaning the Masajid, reading the book of Allah and studying it between them, except that the uh, uh, mercy, rahma, and comfort descends upon them, sakina. And the malaika surround them and seek forgiveness for them. And the law. And the malaika will mention those who are in that gathering of dhikr. This hadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has immense fawa'id that the ulama mention, and we're just going to suffice with a few of those benefits of this hadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And from those benefits are that knowledge is the path to Jannah. That Islamic knowledge is the path to paradise. And that by traversing the path of knowledge, one is traversing the path to Jannah in essence. If they're doing with a Sahih intention and they are not studying Bid'ah, but they're studying Sunnah and studying that which is going to bring them closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they're practicing. مَنْ سَلَقَ طَرِيكًا يَلْتَلْمَسُهُ بِهِ عِلْمًا Whoever traverses the path of knowledge سَحَلَ اللَّهُ لَهُ طَرِيكًا لِلْجَنَّةِ That Allah will make easy for them the path to paradise. So that means طَلَبِ الْعِلْمِ is طَلَبِ الْجَنَّةِ As the Salaf used to say طَلَبِ الْعِلْمِ طَلَبِ الْجَنَّةِ Seeking paradise, seeking knowledge is seeking paradise. And we also learn from this hadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam that mercy descends upon those gatherings of ilm when a person goes to seek knowledge in the masjid which is the best way to seek Islamic knowledge is to be in the houses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Learning the book of Allah and learning the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so that one can be a better believer to practice and come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, and be in the remembrance of Allah azza wa jal. So we learn that the houses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have a special place and we also learn that seeking knowledge in the, in the uh, in, and knowledge meaning ilm al-nafi, meaning the Quran and the sunnah of the Prophet that this is a 
uh, this is a part of the means to Jannah and it is a place of mercy. The gatherings of Elm, of Talib al Elm, especially in the Masajid, is a place of mercy where mercy descends and that the angels are there. We also learned that this, this hadith affirms for us that the Malaika uh, exist and that they are in those gatherings and that they surround those gatherings and that the Malaika they mention to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala about the people in those in those groups even the one who wasn't really listening but they just attended and sat in that group perhaps for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then there's forgiveness for them as well so that these group these group gatherings of ilm and dhikr are gatherings in which a person will gain forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and will gain uh, mercy, the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala subhanahu wa ta'ala and also the malaika are present and will mention them. So it shows us, Ahabat the importance of ilm and nafia, the importance of striving to gain Islamic knowledge. The importance of trying to strive to come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with ilm and nafia. And the importance of doing, of being in the, in the gatherings of Ahl al-ilm, to be in with the scholars, that this is imperative. And if you can't be with the scholars, at least in your locality and in your countries and cities and towns, strive to be with the students of knowledge. And if there are no students of knowledge, but the Imam just reads a hadith of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, then try to be in that gathering. And if the Imam doesn't read a hadith of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi wa Alaihi Wasallam, then try to be in the gathering where they're learning the they're 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 learning the Quran, where you can learn and you can learn how to recite the Quran and memorize the Quran. And if there is no halaqa to Qur'an and you find that the place you're in is dead in essence as far as ilm, then you read something from the book of Allah and perhaps you can share it with a partner because this is a part of husna, husna sahba of having righteous companions that you can share and benefit from one another. That's very important that you remind one another. يتذاكرون, that they remind one another, they benefit from one another. And those are the best companions. And those are the companions that remind you of the Book of Allah. And those are the companions that remind you of the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And they don't remind you and take you to backbiting and cursing and fighting and disunity and those things which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not pleased with but instead they remind you of the khair and that's what you want you want good companionship good companionship is a ni'mah min ni'amillah in this dunya and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam